first of all, tell us about how Deontay Wilder first turned up here in the, in the first place, the story of how he even got into boxing. Well, our first gym was about two miles away from here, and Deontay just walked in one day. He was just a guy that wanted to learn to box. He walked in, and just like anybody else, and, uh, and, and the rest is history, as they say. He, he was just a tall, athletic kid. He wanted to learn to box, and boy, we, we had no idea how, how bad he wanted it and how much work he was willing to put in, but we, we certainly learned all that in short order. Obviously, as he walked in, like you say, he's an imposing character. He's a big guy, big athletic guy. But was it like instant for him? Did he put the gloves on and then he's like, wow, this looks like champion potential? Or was it no, slightly no, no. different to that? It, it took time. Nobody walks in and is just a, a phenom at, at, at boxing. Uh, and that's the part Deontay doesn't get enough credit for is he put the work in. He was all arms and legs and will and heart and punch, you know. And, and it took a while for him to refine all those things. He did it quicker than anybody else did it in terms of making the Olympic team, in terms of uh, you know, winning a bronze medal, but it was a progress. It was, a, uh, it was a, a process and a progression for him to really get from point A to point B, and, and the work that he put in was, was what did it. So he came in the gym, we started on a few basic moves. I went to the other side of the gym and left him alone. Usually when you do that, the guy doesn't do very well. I looked over, Deontay was doing exactly what I asked him to do, even more diligently than when I was standing right, not, uh, right next to him, which is very rare. So I knew right then, I'm like, maybe this kid's different. Maybe this kid could be something. I didn't think in terms of Olympics or anything. I just thought in terms of maybe, you know, we have something here. And he was a relatively late starter as well. I, think, I believe he was in, in his tw early 20s when he first turned up. Yeah, Deontay was uh, almost 20. Uh, it would have been late 2005 when he first walked in the boxing gym. So he was... He was almost 20. Uh, he, uh, as everybody knows, his story, he had a child with spina bifida, so he quit basketball. But he was still an athlete. He still wanted to compete. He just needed a sport that didn't require school, you know, to do it. And boxing is that, is that sport. With basketball, football, baseball, at the university level, you're required to be in school to, to be able to play for the teams. Boxing, you just show up. So even though he was out of school, and he was trying to raise money for his daughter. He, he was still a supreme athlete who wanted to do something athletic, and that's where we connected. He obviously has this incredible power, punch power, one punch power, particularly with the right hand, um, which is what he's built his career upon in many ways. Was the power evident straight away? Did you, did you notice it on the pads, or is that something else that developed over time? Well, mostly power is a God-given thing, and he could punch. There was no question he could punch. He sparred a professional heavyweight that had had maybe 25 pro fights, and Deontay knocked him down. This is a month into his training, and the heavyweight's on the ground, smiles, gets up, looks at me and says, whatever you do, keep him, and, and, and we did. But uh, because of the technique, that was the progression. The power was there, but you can increase power maybe 10% through conditioning and proper technique, and, that, and that's... That's what we did. Once he could always punch and would always be able to knock people out, but once the technique was there, he could land punches more effectively, more when he wanted to land them, where he wanted to land them. You know, instead of just hitting a broad canvas of someone's face, he could land specifically on the jaw or on the temple or on the bridge of the nose, you know, these things. Uh, so being in great shape and having the technique to go with it, that's kind of where it all came together with the God-given punching power. So the vast majority of it is a God-given thing, but you can increase a little bit, 8 to 10 percent, through technique and conditioning. Now we're talking, what, now 13 years uh, of him, of you holding the, the mitts for him. That must have taken a physical toll on you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've had, uh, I had hernia surgery where he hit me uh, just a little bit up under the, uh, the body protector on the side, and I noticed it hurt, but I just kept working. And we kept working away, and then it just kept hurting and hurting and hurting. Finally, I went to the doctor. He's like, you need hernia surgery. I was like, what? Yeah, he separated Mark Breland's shoulder and doing the mitts. He, uh, he uh, dislocated Coach Cuz's thumb. So we're the only team that has three mitt men. <laughs> uh, and let's go on to this fight. Obviously, a big one. Arguably the, the toughest of his career, Tyson Fury. Ha undefeated, former world champion, unified heavyweight champion of the world. How do you solve a puzzle like Tyson Fury? Because no one's been able to do so as of yet. Well, he's a Rubik's Cube, you know, and, and, but a Rubik's Cube can be solved. You know, it takes a lot of uh, film work, uh, a lot of looking uh, at what he does and try to see if there's a discernible pattern, which really there's not. But 
everybody, you know, can be hit. And if Deontay can hit you, he can hurt you. What we can't do is let the fight be eight, nine, ten rounds in, still thinking we just got to land the right shot. We, we have to make inroads during those rounds. We have to accomplish something. We have to have good work done so that those punches can land if the fight goes late. Tyson says this is the, the fight between the number one and two heavyweights in the world. Now, obviously, in Great Britain, we have another undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Anthony Joshua. From your point of view as a coach of Deontay Wilder, do you feel that Tyson Fury is the more difficult fight than Anthony Joshua? Because that's what Deontay Wilder says. Well, I think Fury is, is probably the most difficult fight for anybody. I mean, Tyson Fury is a very difficult fight. Tyson Fury is tall, athletic, undefeated, lineal champion. Uh, you know, he can go in, out, tall, short, lefty, righty. I mean, there, you know, you boy, you'll go mad trying to figure the guy out. But I think Deontay's right. It's a fight between the two best heavyweights in the world today. And the thing that makes it special is these are the two guys that want to fight. And that's everything in this game. Everything in this game is do you want the fight? Do you truly want the fight? And both these guys wanted the fight. They basically got on the phone to each other, said, do you want to fight? Yes, I want to fight too. Let's make the fight. And fighters don't realize they have that power. Promoters, managers, so on. Yes, we're there, we help, we facilitate. But if a fighter wants a fight, he can make a fight. Just finally, um, it's early days in this camp, um, reasonably early days anyway. How is Deontay Wilder at the moment? Is he the same as normal? Or can you notice anything different about him this time with such a big fight on the horizon? Well, he, he wants camp to be perfect, and he wants things to be a certain way, and he's very, very determined for this to be a great camp, and I love that about him. He's been here from day one. Uh, he, you know, the last camp with Ortiz, he had a lot of things going on. He, you know, he physically, he, he, he got sick. Uh, um, there were demands on his time that he could not control, where he couldn't be here like he wanted to be here. So he said, you know, no more of that. We want this camp to be perfect. And so far, he has been absolutely true to his word. He's been here. He's in the gym. He's excited. Uh, I'm thrilled to have him here. I love it when he's in the gym. And, uh, and so, so far, it's, it's been a fantastic camp, and I expect it will continue to be a fantastic camp.